We back. Reacting to the stupidest criminals of all time. How the fuck can you be stupid being a criminal, you feel me? I ain't, I'm a smooth criminal, you feel what I'm saying? In 2009, Matthew McNally- Don't tell me they did blackface. Oh, we starting off with blackface already, bro. Well, how have you- How the f- I'm in Iowa, using masks drawn onto their faces with permanent black marker. Whilst on the run, the two discovered that permanent black marker doesn't rub off easily, leading to their simple arrest and embarrassingly stupid mugshots. However, these two still look like geniuses in comparison to some of the other- What in the we'll be talking f- about. Who the fuck? as we discuss the stupidest criminals of all time. Take for example MacArthur Wheeler, who robbed two banks in broad daylight as he thought that pouring lemon juice on his face would make him invisible to cameras. When shown the bank surveillance footage, Wheeler refused to believe that he was visible, stating to officers, but I wore the juice, believing that as long as he didn't come near a heat source, he should have been completely invisible. Police concluded that Wheeler was not crazy or on drugs, just incredibly mistaken, with the lemon juice mistake eventually costing Wheeler a 24.5 year prison sentence. However, if we're on the topic of terrible disguises, then we can't go past Dennis Hawkins, whose disguise as an old lady wasn't much better. <laughs> his sweater accompanied fake boobs, a full no. boob, clown pants, with his insanely recognizable outfit, helping police to catch Hawkins only an hour after the robbery. The police chief for the area stated, he would get my nomination for dumbest criminal, I think. You still have his black facial hair with a blondish wig. This motherfucker. Bro, people are stupid. Different is also a good way to describe Patrick McGuire's disguise, who robbed an Illinois convenience store while covering his face with a clear plastic bag. He was only able to obtain $60 from the robbery. However, due to his extensive criminal history, he was sentenced to 15 years in prison for the stunt, meaning that he had to spend one year in prison for every $4 stolen from the store. Talk about a bad return. Equally bad was Paul Singles, oh, no. who attempted to rob a bank in Florida by this using just his fingers fingers curled up into a gun shape. The quote unquote weapon was so non-threatening that the bank teller gave him only $120, after which he'd flee on foot before being caught by police only 10 minutes later. Then there was James Blankenship, who thought- Dude, what the fuck is- People are- People are really- He really went up to him and he like this. Bro. The fuck? You be watching too much fucking movies, bro. People- These- These-, these Movies are real thought that robbery was legal as long as you did it at a certain time of day. Back in 2013, Blankenship broke into his own mother's home, after which the police were called, who would take to their Facebook page later that day to explain what had happened. He fled the scene upon seeing his mother. The male was located under the house hiding in a crawl space. When advised of his charges, he made the statement, I thought you could only be charged with burglary if you break in during the night time. Blankenship was given 180 it's a days in jail aim, and ordered to pay a $100 fine, yet this wasn't the only time when a person was dumb enough to think that a law didn't apply to them. Them. Because when Ruben no, Pavan no, 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 was no, 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 state that he thought everything was free because of the name of the business, Finders Keepers. The sign did say Finders Keepers, so I took that DVD player, took it home, I mean, and haven't told the local TV station. A couple of weeks later, the stuff is still there on the porch, so I'm thinking to myself, Finders Keepers, they probably just put stuff out there for people to take. The business responded via Facebook stating, this man who was caught on video is saying it is all a misunderstanding. He thought everything at our store was free. Is that really the best defense he could come up with? After which Pavan reportedly turned in the stolen goods to police, holding that he's not a bad person or a bad dad and is rather just unbelievably stupid. Yeah. But was he as dumb as Derek Mosley? What'd he do? Who in 2013 attempted to rob a store named Discount Gun Sales by using a baseball bat. <laughs> when Mosley allegedly barged into Discount Gun Sales and smashed the display counter with his baseball bat, the store manager simply pulled out his own personal firearm and pointed it straight at the would-be robber, holding Mosley in the store until he was arrested and charged with first degree robbery. A similar story then came out of Texas in July 2022 when a gun store was robbed at knife point, although this tale instead ended in a body bag as the robber was fatally shot by the store owner as he tried to exit with his loot. But what happens when you accidentally- He died? One whilst- Oh my god. Crime? 
Pocket dialing the police is probably a fairly common occurrence. However, for Carson Reinhardt and Nathan Teckley Merriam, it happened at the most unfortunate moment, specifically while they were breaking into a car. The alert dispatcher soon realized that the call was an accidental one, and moreover that the guys on the other end might be up to no good. For the next 35 minutes, the dispatcher stayed on the line, listening and gathering information, as Teckley Merriam and Reinhardt did the following. Discovered a car that they thought they could burglarize, discussed how to break into the car, allegedly broke into the car, exclaimed in delight over finding narcotics in the car, became confused as to how and why a police car was following them, and reacted in disbelief when the arresting officer revealed that they'd been on the line to 911 the entire time. Scott Simon found himself in a similar situation, although under much more severe circumstances. Whilst why is my camera in 2015, up, Scott was successfully sentenced to life in prison, as two years prior he'd pocket dialed the police while admitting to a friend that he was the one who committed the crime. Oh my he had no idea God. he called 911, a sheriff's office spokeswoman told the Miami Herald. He basically told on himself, as did Albert Bailey, what do you do? in a much stupider way. What Bailey do? had planned on robbing a bank in Fairfield, Connecticut, although rather than exercising the element of surprise, he was really trying to rob banks, prior bro. to the robbery stating, I want $100,000 in large bills and no die packs. I'll be sending someone into the bank to get the money. Don't call the police, we are monitoring the police scanner. Prior to making this phone call, Bailey had already served seven years in prison for a previous bank robbery. However, this new plan was equally ineffective, as after arriving at the bank to collect his cash, Bailey was locked inside, arrested, and sentenced to another nine years in prison. Although, if he wanted to avoid this time behind bars, he could have had a chat with Tito and Amanda Watts, who got arrested in Florida for selling tickets to enter heaven at a price of a hundred. Just look at him, bro. Just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> with Tito and Amanda Watts, who got arrested in Florida for selling tickets to enter heaven at a price of $100. Tito Watts said in his police statement, I don't care what the police say, the tickets are solid gold, and it was Jesus who gave them to me behind the KFC and said to sell them so I could get me some money to go to outer space. He you should arrest awesome. Jesus because he's the one who gave me the golden tickets and said to sell them. I'm willing to wear a wire and set Jesus up. The couple had apparently earned over $10,000 from the stunt, meaning that they were able to find people even dumb dumber than them, one of which might have been Ruben Zarate. While attempting to rob a muffler shop in 2008, Zarate was told that the shop couldn't access the money safe without their manager, who didn't begin his shift until later that afternoon. Instead of bailing on the robbery, Zarate instead gave them his phone number. Wait, wait, whose number is this? give him a ring the next time the manager was in. They did so later that afternoon, although after returning to the store, Zarate received no money and was instead met by police and charged with aggravated robbery. Then there was the man who gave the people he was robbing something even stupider. The unnamed robber walked into a London bank carrying a gun and a bag, which he'd take to the front desk before demanding £700,000 in cash from the bank worker. But after making his demands, the crook handed over his gun to the cashier instead of the bag. Investigating authorities stated, The guess is that he is very inexperienced and panicked when he approached the cashier, handing over his gun instead of a bag by mistake. But it was Trevor Jones who left an even more damning piece of evidence at his crime scene. After breaking into a house in Atlanta, Jones took a moment to check his Facebook on the owner's computer before leaving without logging out. Less than three- What the fuck? Why would you check your face? Years later, a similar story entered news headlines, reading a 26-year-old Minnesota man has been tracked down by police after leaving his Facebook profile logged in. And why would you not sign out? Robbed. Although this story has a much funnier this ending. This is stupid. The homeowner decided to message the robber via his Facebook, stating, no. "You left a few things at my house last night. How can I get them back to you?" Which was followed by the robber agreeing to come back to the home so he could collect the stuff he forgot. You're However, the robber didn't get any of his items back and was instead arrested while still wearing a watch that he'd stolen from the night before. While both of these idiots used social media poorly, at least they didn't brag about the robbery in a YouTube video, as is what happened in the bizarre case of Hannah Sabata. This bitch. 2012, at the age of 19, Sabata stole oh, $6,000 from a bank in Nebraska, and while almost anybody else would have simply kept quiet, Hannah instead took to her YouTube channel Jelly Beanie to upload a video titled Chick Bank Robber, in which she'd straight up admit to having just committed a robbery. She'd then discuss 
us her entire methodology for the crime while showing the money and the amount that had been stolen before concluding the video by describing the vehicle she had used and that it had its license plates removed. This information eventually resulted in her supporters arrest and sentencing of 10 to 20 years prison, oh, done so nice. in a public courtroom filled to maximum capacity Ew. with people who had seen the video. Ew. Just two years prior to this, 21-year-old Frank Singleton was being released from Palm Beach County Jail, having just served time for a trespassing charge. The only issue was he didn't have a car to leave the jail, so he decided to steal one from the visitor's parking lot, yet the car he decided to steal was a manual and he could only drive auto. Oh. Singleton sat in the car looking like an idiot before being arrested and sentenced to a further six years in prison, telling deputies that he tried to take the car because he didn't feel like walking to his home about six miles away. And while you may be sat here thinking that these criminals can't get any dumber, it's time to introduce 53-year-old Michael Anthony Fuller. What do you do? knowledge that the US banknote doesn't go any higher than $100. No, no, Fuller no. Fuller had the genius idea to create a counterfeit $1 million note oh, no. and use it at his local Walmart. He loaded this cart with a vacuum cleaner, a microwave, and various other items totaling $472 before handing the million dollar note to the cashier, expecting 900 This... Oh my god, dude. $99,528 in change. Needless to say, Walmart wasn't able to facilitate this and instead store staff called police. Fuller was later charged with attempting to obtain property by false pretense and uttering a forged instrument. What the fuck? These guys are... <laughs> like and subscribe for more reactions.